Welcome to ASAW Community Church, where serving and giving begins. We look to the author and finisher of our faith, Jesus Christ, who demonstrated the greatest example of service and sacrifice. We believe by following his example, we can unlock the abundance of this life and be assured about our glorious, boundless future. As we gather here today, we acknowledge the power of the triune God. We offer sincere praises to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We worship and adore the maker of the heavens and earth. Indeed, we collectively affirm. We desire godly change in our lives. We are expecting God to meet us here in a mighty way. We are determined to leave this place wiser, stronger, more joyful, and equipped with biblical truth to help us conquer the week ahead. We expect God's best, leaning on him for daily directions and resolving to renew our minds and surrender our hearts through his word. We long to understand the true posture of worship, the power of earnest praise and the blessings of hearing the word and applying it to our lives. As we look around, we realize that serving the Lord is not confined to these walls. God gathered us here for instructions, but sends us out to share the message of reconciliation. Acceptance of the shed blood of Jesus, his death, burial, and resurrection are essential to abundance in this life and the next. We are here to win souls for Christ, encourage those who do not know him personally, and build up believers to accept Christ's call and live a purpose-filled life. Everyone is welcome here at ASAL Community Church, where serving and giving begins. It is time for the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper memorializes the atoning death of Jesus Christ. It is a celebration, a thanksgiving for Christ's gift to us. This is a moment to examine your worship, your relationship with Christ, and your relationship with your fellow man. Before we commune, we should take a look at what's going on in our own hearts. I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Let us pray. O Lord, we praise thee for the gift of thy son, Jesus Christ, who died upon the cross. 
we do not pursue to come to thy table trusted in our own righteousness but in thy mercy forgive our transgressions cleanse our hearts and put a new spirit within us make us aware of the presence of our living lord in whom we trust we believe amen first corinthians chapter 11 verses 23 to 24 reads for I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us eat together. Also in that same chapter, verses 25 to 26 says, In the same way, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us drink together. Amen.
That's some, that's some old school right there. That, uh, listen, uh, you know, uh, when the spirit takes a hold of her, it, I, she put the microphone down. I thought she was done. And she said, no, 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 I got a B selection. I, I, I ain't mad. At, I know it was the blood that, that, uh, that saved me. That's all right. That's all right, Mother Newell. Take your time. That's right. Take your time. Mm -hmm. mm, sound like she about ready to hoop now. Let go. <laughs> go on. Just take your time. Go ahead. Just take your time. Gives me a few minutes. But it is always good.
Well, listen, when, when mother speaks, you just take your time. Just. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Outside the walls. Yes, ma'am. Y'all, y'all have heard the assignment. Tell them about Jesus. Outside the walls. Mm. Father God, we're so thankful to have the Spirit reside right here. That our mother would open up and confess her her love of you to the people of God to strengthen them that the church is not inside but the church is outside so we're thankful father for on this Saturday that you've allowed us to be here to witness and to hear and to partake of your spirit moving so we're thankful father thankful for the communion thankful that your son died thankful for those over here I pray right now father that the word is preached this evening not only that it resonate in the hearts and the minds of the people here but it strengthens them and gives them a conversation to share with somebody who does not know you as we move forward in this service in jesus name amen well how about a hand for our special guest this evening accompanied by my good friend reverend rodney cash i am so thankful to be the pastor of asaw community church with serving and giving begins i'm so thankful to have pastor bj and the first lady in the house this evening uh, it's always good when a man of God stop by to support you. So I'm so thankful for you stopping by and the fellowship and you and your wife. And, uh, and David has been here for quite a while. So we're, we're so thankful. Uh, always thankful for men to be in the house. Because I believe that if men come to church, we can do some things in the community. So it's always an, important that we have men in the house. And I'm also thankful for the members and for the friends thankful to have terrell back as she traveled to preach in tennessee last week also to have roger and gloria back as they handling business in north carolina and it's always good to have the perkins in the house minister cecil jeanette linda back there learning about our sound and uh, our ministry back there and to have my wife back who was absent last week so god bless you God bless you. Um, tonight we're going to conclude on the series of uh, Enjoy the Park. Enjoy the Park. We're going to do part four tonight. And, 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 and here's the thing that I think is so crucial is that you have to listen to all four to really get an understanding of the, not only the series, but what God is trying to tell us today. It's imperative that we understand that God's word is prevalent and in a time like today it is much needed and it is necessary it's much needed and it is necessary and so enjoy the park has been a, ser a series and we concluded a couple weeks ago uh, we started a couple weeks ago with enjoy the park and we looked at each letter in the word park to make this series and we started with the P and in the P, we found our sermon coming out of Psalms that the Lord is our strength and our shield. And our heart should trust in him. And if we do, our heart will greatly rejoice and we will bless the Lord at all times because not only if it's in our heart, but our trust factor, we know that we give him the praise because the blessings come from him. And so we establish that. It's through our prayers we know that God has power. The ability to protect. And because of that, we praise him. And in his ability to protect and have power, we have confidence. So that was the, that was the P. And then the next week, we went into the A. And the title of that sermon was Awesomeness and Stillness. And we learn that the Lord fights for you, but you just have to trust and stand still and see God fight with his might, not yours. God will protect you. 
And all we have to do is stand still, be patient, and allow God to do what God does and let his power not only protect us, but by his command of his voice, he can do things that we don't have the ability to do. He allowed the sea to roll back and the wind to blow so that his children could walk on dry land. But we had to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And then week number three, we dealt with the aura. And we realized that in the aura, we had to be thankful for rest. Not the physical rest, but the spiritual rest. And the spiritual rest in the law came from those Pharisees. And today it would be our self-righteous people who inundate us on how they think we ought to live serving our God. And people would put pressure on you to make you feel that you're not saved up to their level. But I, I'm not trying to ascertain your level because it's God that I'm trying to please. So if I'm trying to please God and my focus is on him by default, you'll see him through me because I'm not trying to impress you. And so in thankful for rest, we realize that, that, that Jesus said, come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Why? Because at that particular time, the mandate that people had put on the Christian was overwhelming. And Jesus came to simplify all of that. To do away with the law. See, see, you know what we need to do? We just need to do the simple things that the word tells us. You know what we need to do? Love one another. Follow the commandments. I see you in heaven. But our denominations and people around us based upon their understanding of the word have put some undue pressure on us that we got to live a certain way. And Jesus said, look, I, I came and I'm the example. So, so if you're trying to live up to man, then you missed the whole point of the message when it says, learn of me. And so that brings us to tonight. That brings us to the K. It will be found in Galatians chapter 5. Verses 22 to 26. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 26. And it reads, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. If we live in the spirit, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. My sermon title is Kindness Comes with the Fruit. Kindness comes with the fruit hey, listen look this 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 walk this walk is only complicated if you don't understand him but if you understand him it simplifies the walk it does because if you understand him because if you are learning of him you will understand that there are some things that you don't even have to participate in because it's not of him you remember when everybody walked around with those WWJD bracelets on? And it stood for what would Jesus do? If, out, if throughout your day, every time you make a decision, every time you make a choice, every time you open your mouth, if you would just think, what would Jesus do? I guarantee you, your life would be better. Because Jesus doesn't get caught up in no mess. So if you find yourself in mess, then you got to ask yourself, would Jesus really do this? And am I a good representation of him by participating in something that's not of God? So let's look at Galatians chapter 5. See, I, I like to just get to the good part. And the reason why I like to get to the good part, because who in here can tell anybody about sin or work walking in the flesh? That's a natural thing. Nobody has to teach you to sin. It just, it just rears his head. Nobody has to teach you how to defend yourself. Defending yourself comes at birth. 
That's just something that's in us. We defend ourselves. We deflect. So nobody has to teach you about sin. So if you go into Galatians verses 19 to 21, it talks about things of the flesh. And the reason why I don't spend a lot of time with it is because I want to let you know that if you are connected to God, if Christ is your savior, let's go to how you defeat the flesh daily. Because nobody has to tell you what's not of God. You know it's not of God. And how do you know it's not of God? Because you don't tell nobody about it. <laughs> See, things of God we share. Things that are not of God, unless you are birds of a feather flocking together. So in Galatians chapter 5, it starts off with, but the fruit of the Spirit is, and then it gives a multitude of adjectives about the fruit of the Spirit. So, so, so we got we to gotta figure out, as I've always shared with you, that this is a, a walk. You will not fulfill the lust of your flesh if you were walking in the spirit. They war with each other. You'll find that. They war with each other. The flesh does this and the, and the spirit does that and they war. But, 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 but who's undefeated? God. And so to be a champion, you got to continue to walk in with a championship mentality, knowing that God is undefeated. And all I got to do is line up with him and do what the word says in my life, in my journey, and my, 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 my uh, um, uh, trials and tribulations will be minimized because I'm walking and operating in the fruit of the spirit. I mean, I'm just telling you what the word says. You can, you can make it up if, as you go along if that's what you choose to go. It says, but the fruit of the spirit is. It doesn't say fruits. It just says fruit. But it listed so many other things. And when I first read it, I thought maybe there was a grammatical error because according to uh, my English teacher, that if I have more than one thing, that's plural. So I'm looking for the, the fruits of the spirit and his love and joy. But, 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 the, but, but God doesn't make mistakes. And when he gives those who wrote the Bible divine instructions, they carry it out. So it is the, the fruit. So then I came to realize that if he's talking about the fruit of the spirit and we're talking about God, then all of these words encompass the fruit. And so if you are walking in the spirit of, all of these things come with the fruit of the spirit, which is love and joy. And so if you're going to enjoy the park, you got to understand that kindness is in there. But if you notice, it says, but the fruit of the spirit is love. Well, shoot, once you get the love, love covers what? A multitude of things. It covers a multitude of sin. It covers a multitude of things. So if love is first, then we can get joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness. We can get all of that if we got love. Because that's first. If you understand the power of love, bro, 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 flesh, can't catch, 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 flesh can't catch up to you. Now, I, listen, let me get this straight now. I'm not saying it does not exist. I'm saying that if we are walking in the spirit as Jesus did, if we're walking because we say we are a part of him, we're connected to him. If we are walking and thinking in love, the other things can't catch us. Unless. Unless. We get conceited and think that we are so holy and that Satan can't trip us up. Yeah. So that's why we have to continue to renew our minds. That's why we have to operate with a humble spirit and know that any time there could be danger. But I thank God that he provides a way out of the danger. But you got to know him. So it says, but the fruit of the spirit is. So if we live by the fruit of the spirit, we live within Christian morality. It's our Christian morality morality there are some values there are some things that we ought not participate in because we are part of the spirit if your life lines up with these words you can enjoy the park 
If your life lines up, you can enjoy life. See, see, I don't see where it says, but the fruit of the spirit is depression. I don't see where it says the fruit of the spirit is conflict. I, I, I'm, I'm, that's part of the flesh. But what I'm saying is, how do we get here? Well, it's usually when there's some things going on in your life, you got to stop and realize, is this connected to love? Is this connected to hurt? Is this connected to fear? Is this connected to anger? What is this causing me to feel this way day in and day out? But yet I profess one thing, but yet on the inside and the outside is not lining up. I tell you, you got to check what fruit you're connecting to. But this fruit resonates within you. How do you know that the word of God is so good and so perfect? Because God doesn't make mistakes. See, what he, this is what he does. This is what he does. He says, but the fruit of the spirit is. But if you go back to verse 19, when it's talking about the flesh, you know what he says? You know what Paul says? He uses the word works. Plural, meaning you can fall into all of that nonsense in 19 and 20. He doesn't say the work of to make it sound just like the fruit of. He lets you know that these are some works that your flesh is dealing with and it's dealing with a multitude of those things. But I'm here to tell you that love supersedes it all. So what does it so what does it say? Continuing in that same verse, it says, it says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, is joy, is peace, is long suffering, is kindness, is goodness, is faithfulness. Then it goes down to verse 23. It says gentleness and self-control against such there is no law. Listen, we don't need to spend a lot of time on each one of these words. We know what they mean because they, they bring excitement. They bring what? A, 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 a boldness to you. They bring a, a confidence to you. It brings joy to know these type of things. But it says, it says that there is no what? There is no law. Against such, there is no law. Listen. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, Jesus came to do away with the law. We are now under grace. We are not. It's good to know. See, I believe you ought to know the foundation of how we got to grace. Because if you go back and look at the law and the foundation of the Bible, you should be thankful for grace. You should be thankful that Jesus came that allowed you to live in grace. And under grace, we ought to be what? More gracious. Under grace, we ought to be more loving. You know why? Because once we take his yoke upon us and we learn of him, we realize that all we have to do is what? Love one another. All this other stuff that people say that you got to do, it makes them feel good to make them think they're in this position that they're trying to tell you how to live. I'm not trying to tell you how to live. I'm just repeating what's in the book. The book is telling you how to live. The book is telling you how to walk. The book is telling you how to talk. And all I'm doing is repeating it. Why? So that you can now let that marinate within you to tell somebody else that doesn't know. That's what this journey is. That's what the mother said. She said, don't worry about it in here. It's out there. We need to be out there telling somebody what's going on in here. But if in here we're trying to show out to each other. Got to understand how the spirit works and what it produces. The fruit of the spirit should be dwelling and working within us because Jesus came to do away with the law. See, see, but it says against such there is no, ain't no law against this. This is grace. This, this is it. This, this, is, this is your assignment to love. This is your assignment because out of love you'll find joy. Out of joy you'll find peace. You'll be patient. You'll have long suffering. And you'll be kind. What is missing in the world today? Kindness. See, we believe if we do something for somebody, that's kindness. I'm telling you, you got to be kind. It's good to help some people, but sometimes we take that help and turn it into a responsibility. And we cripple the people we're supposed to be helping because we're now responsible for them. I'm telling you that if we operate in love and we teach love, they'll have a desire for themselves. Teach them to love themselves as Christ loves us. 
There is no law against these things. Paul is teaching us how we ought to live today. The freedom of being Christians versus being under the law. So enjoy the park. And while residing in the fruit of the spirit. That's where we ought to live. That's where I, I, I pray. That's where our churches need to be. Our, our churches need to be loving. Our churches need to, I think more people have left church because of there's no love and joy and peace. And I, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. And I, I know I said some things a couple of weeks ago, but I'm so glad Kurt Franklin got on national television and reiterated what I said. There comes a time, Pastor BJ, where we got to pass the baton. We got to pass it. You know why? Because God gave it to us in our youth, and it is up to us to pass it to the next generation to continue on and have more what vitality to do the work we've had our day and I thank God for it but, 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 but this word is the same yesterday, today and tomorrow so guess what somebody got to come alone so he says as such there is no law you are free you are free from the condemning sentence of the law and the people who possess it free let me tell you something when people talk to me listen i'm gonna tell you right now when you talk to me i'm gonna listen to you and i'm gonna line it up is that the word of god yes or no yes it is let's move forward no it ain't go on about my business i'm not gonna sit here and argue with you over how many genders there are there's two there's two that's all i see i see two male female that's it and if you protest, then you protesting God. You ain't protesting me. I'm not buying into it. It's two. That's what the word of God says. So he says, against such there is no law. So let's look at verse 24. Verse 24 says, and those who are Christ have crucified the flesh and its passion and desire. Man, let's look at the first part of that. It says, and, and those who are Christ, man, well, what, does that mean that you, wait a minute, and those who are Christ, those who think they're Christ, those who act like they're Christ, those who, those who, hmm, those who, well, who is, who is that? Because, you know, you ever get a ticket and they say, they'll tell the police officer, they say you can go over, I did that one time, David, got a ticket. And the guy said, oh, you know how fast you're going? I said, well, they say you can go 10 miles over. So he said, who is they? I said, you know, they. So then the guy said, well, tell them to help you pay for this. <laughs> so I don't use that no more. But here's, here's what it says in those who are Christ. Who's that? Who is he talking about? He's talking about all of us. All who are true Christians, those who belong to Christ, those who are united with him, those who have been purchased by his blood. The Bible is specific. Paul is letting you know and he is talking to you that you are of Christ. So therefore, if I am, then I ought to do certain things. That, that's all. That, you know what that's all this journey is? Is that you are to represent your confession. That's it. Represent your confession. He then goes on to say, he then goes on to say, have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. Let, let, let's break it down. Let's make it a little bit more plain. Those who believe, those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross. That's how we got salvation. When he was nailed to the cross, when his blood shed for us, it nailed, it took you out of the darkness and brought you into the light. You don't have to live like verse 19 and verse 20. You can live by the fruit of the spirit and you can live in love and you can live in joy. As a matter of fact, you ought to be because that's who Jesus is. All we're doing is mirroring who he is. But, but you got to know who he is to understand who you are. It says, have crucified the flesh with his passions and desire. Let me tell you what it says in Romans 6.6. 6. Romans 6.6 6 says this. Knowing this, 
that our old man was crucified with him. The body of sin might be done away with that we should be no longer slaves to sin. Do you understand that you have victory? Do you understand that because of what he did, he took our place? We have victory because he did it. He did it for you. He did it for me. And therefore, you don't have to let those things hold you down. You don't let people put you in a place that you don't have to be in because you serve a living God. You serve a Jesus that is graceful and merciful for you. All you got to do is be obedient, understand his word. And if you do fall short, repent. Paul uses a, a word in this verse. He uses the word crucified. That's a powerful word because if you hear the word crucified, it gives an image in your head of what Jesus endured to allow us the liberty in which we now currently reside in. That's a difficult word because it reminds you of, of, of what Jesus had to go through. It reminds you what he did on the cross. And because he, he crucified those things on our behalf, the least we can do is walk daily in the spirit and the power over the flesh. Because of what he did on our behalf. He did it. I didn't do it. I'm just reporting it. He did it. So let's go down. Let's go down. Let's go down. Because here's the beautiful part about when Paul writes, and if you're paying attention, if you're listening, you realize now, if you go back and take all four sermons, you can understand how to enjoy the park. Because you got to pray, you got to have praise, you got to have awesomeness and stillness, you got to know how to rest, you got to let God, does what, let God do what God's going to do, and we got to love. That's how you can sit in the park and enjoy it. Do the things that are necessary. And guess what? It doesn't require a PhD to understand prayer. It doesn't, man. In your midnight hour, just pray. That's how we enjoy, that's how we enjoy the palm. You crucify the flesh by taking his yoke upon you and learning of him. And that's what we got to teach people. Not learn of me. Learn of him. Not learn because of what I say. Learn because of what you read. Not, don't, don't, don't. Th Listen, you better make sure that we talked about this in Tuesday Town Hall. Hey, hey, Sometimes preachers will, will give you a scripture and take a social commentary and turn it into the sermon. You better look at it and see if that is lining up. I'm telling you that it's going to line up. It ain't so. Whoever comes here is going to line up because if it don't line up, they ain't coming back. I don't care how good they preach. I don't care how good they sound. It must line up because I need people to walk out of here in the full knowledge of knowing and not on emotion because emotion will get you tripped up. It's hard to turn to your neighbor when you're the only one there. Better turn to God. So let's go back. 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is, and then we have love and joy and peace and long suffering and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness, self control. Against such there is no law. Then we get down to verse 24. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. So when we get here, we should know where we are. We should know who we are. We should know where we are. We should know who we are. We should know what direction we're going on. We should know what type of life we want to live. See, here's where people get tripped up. They know all of this, but for some strange reason, it's not in the forefront. It's not. Because if it was, we wouldn't be dealing with all these other issues inside the church. Inside the church, we ought to come because there are some things in here that should separate us from outside. But sometimes in churches, outside look better than inside the church. So, so but, but if we are following the word, if we understand how to live in the park and enjoy the park, and we understand that we're going to take his yoke upon us, and we're going to pray to him, and we can be still, and we can be patient, allow God to be God, look at what it says in verse number 25. It says, if. Because everybody ain't living like this that call on his name. But it says, those who are, if we live 
It, do you understand? He didn't say if we just uh, um, uh, sidestep it. He didn't say if we get around it. He says if we live. You know what live is? Live is a home. Live is where you're supposed to be comfortable. It says if we live in the spirit, let us do what? Walk in the spirit. So if we living in it, we ought to walk in it. And the reason why he telling you, because everybody ain't living in it. And a lot of people sometimes don't walk in it. But if you are of God and you know what he's done for you, you can live in the spirit. And when you live in the spirit, you know what you do when you live in the spirit? You have love and you have joy and you have peace and long suffering and kindness and goodness and faithfulness. See, if those things are not happening in your church, then why are you walking in? Because it's you. You got to understand this whole journey is you. It is your relationship. It's your knowledge. It's your understanding of. It. So Paul is saying, if we live in this spirit, let us also walk in it. And if we walk in it, we can change our communities. And when we change our communities, we change our cities. And we change our cities, we change our state. And we change our state, we change our country. And we change our country, we can change the world because we are walking in the spirit. And that's where a lot of us fall short. We don't know what spirit we walking in. We don't know what spirit we living in. We don't know what spirit we walking in. But I'm telling you that if you love God and you know what he's done for you, it's easy to walk in it because he's already paid the price for you to walk in it. So I know there's one more verse. There's one more verse. There's one more verse. And I, I, I tell you, I don't even think it's relevant. I really don't. And the reason why I don't really believe that verse 26 is relevant, because let it, look at what it says. Let us not become. You know why he got to tell us that? Because not y'all. It's some people that walk in the spirit. It's some people that live in the spirit, but they forgot whose they are and where they come from. And all of a sudden, they become feeling like they are entitled. That becomes a pompous mentality. So he has to remind us, even though you're living in the spirit and you're walking in it, and you're going to benefit from all the fruit of the spirit, let us not become. Meaning you wasn't that until you thought you was better than everybody else. So it's, it's, let us not become what? Conceited because when you stand in this position and the message is blessing people it's easy for you to lose sight thinking it is you when it ain't you but it's him through you and as long as you remember that it's him through you then you won't have to deal with this conceitedness you got to remember the reason why we can pass the baton because it's not my church it's his church he just allowed me to be here for a little while and I got to give it to somebody else because it's not even going to be his why because it's God's so it says let us not become conceited and provoking one another because you know that's what we do we challenge each other based upon the knowledge I've seen it in church but you think you know something and somebody else think they know more then they challenge you but they're not trying to encourage you or lift you up they're trying to let you think this is what I know you can't know nothing because everything we know comes from the book it comes from the book and at the end of the day at the end of the day a preacher is reading and presenting a message that God divinely gave men of God to write, to resonate in you. So what are you envying anybody for? Because just like I can do it, she did it. Did you see her do it? She sang her song and then she went into what God is. That's because she knows him. It doesn't make a difference what your degree level is. There should be no envy. Why? Because we are all on the same walk trying to get the same results for the master so that when we get there, he'll say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. God bless you and may heaven smile upon you. That's all this is. That's all this is. That's all this is. She can say what she said because all of a sudden the fruit of the spirit that she knows welled up in her. She put the microphone down and said, let me tell you about the God I serve. The doors of the church are open.
if you want to be a member of Asar Community Church, all you have to do is fill out this card and say, I, I want to be a member and answer the two questions. Why do you want to be a member? I'm telling you, I just had this conversation with a young lady today. She was telling me all the things about the church. And I said, why are you a member? She said, well, I mean, because I like the service. No, 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 no. I like good times, but it ain't on the air no more. <laughs> you know, why, why are you a member? She says, what do you mean? I said, well, I said, let me give you, a, let me give you two answers. Let me give you a, 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 a society answer, and I'll give you a biblical answer. So a society answer is if you ever do multi-level marketing, they will ask you, what is your why? They will always ask you that. What is your why? Because you've got to define your why because your the why propels you forward in the business. What are you trying to accomplish? What is your why? The biblical answer is you have to know why because if you know why, then you can stay the course that he has for you. When I told my good friend in California I was planting a church, he said, why? And I gave him the standard answer. Everybody gave him, you know, to, to preach the word of God, help people. He said, yeah, but, but there's a whole lot of churches. Why? I'm like, what do you mean why? He said, go back and ask the Lord why he wants you to plant a church. So I'm like, all right. Lord, why do you want me to plant a church? Serving and giving. I want you to plant a church. And I want your church to be ministry. And if it's ministry, I want you to do the assignment. And all Jesus said when he left is, share the gospel, help somebody. Make it simple. Your church has to have an assignment. So I went back to my friend and I said, well, this is the, this the answer I feel I got from the Lord. He wants us to be a church of where serving and giving begins. He wants us to make sure that we support ministries. He wants to make sure that the ministry is outside of the church. He wants people to come in. He wants people to come in and have a sense of belonging and a connection to the ministry. He wants, and then he said, whoa, whoa, all of that? I said, yeah, hold up. I got some more since you asked. I got some more. And guess what I said at the vision meeting? My wife was there and I think Roger and Gloria was there. I said, this is a division meeting. I said, there's a 10-year plan. I said, it's a 10-year plan. Somewhere around year five or seven, I'm praying that the Lord is going to send me two guys. Why? Because I knew when I started, I was going to have to pass the baton. There's so many preachers right now that should have passed the baton. And they're holding on for dear life. And the church is dying. Kurt said it. Kurt said it. When I said it, I, people got mad at me. Kurt said it. It was a whole different ball game. Why? Because they look at him on that national level and say, well, it must be relevant. If Kirk is saying, I'm telling you, it's relevant because it's in the body. And so when the Lord sends those two young preachers, one of them is going to be the pastor of Esau and the other one we're going to plant somewhere else. But they're going to learn what God has given me to share with them is I pass the baton. When you pass the baton, all you do is give them the instructions that you had up until your point of passing. Then God takes them someplace else. So you ought to know these things and you ought to know why. You're a member of a church and you ought to know what ministry you would like to serve in. I say ministries are important because when you are part of a ministry, you like David. David likes to go fishing. And if he created a ministry where once a month men got together and went fishing, I'm telling you they would fish, but they would also be talking about the Lord. And when they talk about the Lord, your houses will change because there's things. See, men, I'm a firm believer that men can come to Bible study, but that don't do it for men. Men got to be doing something in fellowship to connect. We do. Like when I used to play golf, I, used to, I tell people the story of Eddie. Eddie had two sons. Eddie Morris. He's a member here. He don't show up because he got a lot of, he got a whole bunch of other stuff going on. But he's a member here. He got two sons and they're athletic. And he said to me on the golf course, he said, man, my sons don't ever listen to me. As soon as my wife tells them something, they, they do everything she tells them. I said, that's because she's taking them to practice. You show up at the game. You can't criticize at the game. You got to talk at practice. Then I said this thing to him, it changed his whole life. I said, how much time do you think Earl Wood spent with Tiger? They didn't come out of a Bible class. They just came out of men's fellowship. He got, he got it. He went home. We ain't played golf in 10 years. But his son is at North Carolina State quarterback, baseball and football. And his other son is going to be a number one draft pick because he went home. Every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock is our Bible study, but we are on hiatus <laughs> until September the 13th. 
It's been a great season. It's been a great uh, a year of learning. But I always believe that we should refresh ourselves. And how do you refresh yourself? You disconnect. You take some time. See, some people think that they're saved because they show up to church every single time. No. No, salvation is in you. You know, church is with you wherever you go. To say if two or three are gathered, I'll be in the midst. So we'll come back in September. When it comes to giving here, I, I'm telling you something. I, I, I'm, I'm getting ready to do this research on this just to find out. And I don't know when it was done, but my wife sent me a TikTok with Creflo Dollar saying that he apologized for teaching tithing all these years wrong. That's what he said, not me. Yeah, but that's what he said. And it's a, it's a video. He said that if you bought any of his books, tapes, or, or CDs about giving, tithing, throw them away because he has misrepresented the word of God. This is what he said. So I got to go back and see in the context of what he's talking about. But one thing he did say into the leading that I truly believe is that, that, that it's grace. It's grace. It's grace. We should give as God has blessed us and has blessed you. Not under duress, but as a cheerful giver. It's not how much you give. It's not how much you give. You know what he said to the woman who gave the two bits? He said she gave more than all of y'all. She gave out of her heart. She gave all that she had. They gave out of their surplus. So when it comes to giving, whatever God means to you, that's what you do. And that's what you give. If you're here, you can give in the envelopes and place it in these containers at the end of the service. If you're online, if you want to give online, you go to asawcc.org and you can give online. And that's it. That's the service. All within an hour, Pastor BJ. That's how we do it over here. <laughs> we appreciate y'all coming out. We appreciate Mother Newell doing her thing. Thank you for blessing us with our A and B selection, my sister. I didn't even know. I mean, I knew you was coming, but I misunderstood some texts. But I'm glad you're here. And I'm glad you sat there. Matter of fact, anytime you want to bring us to selection, you just call me. I'll come get you too. <laughs> thankful for all that were here. Father God, we're so thankful for this evening. Thankful for the songs that have been sung. Thankful for the music that's been played. Thankful for the hearts that have, have, have pressed into your word. That their tomorrow will be better than their today. For those who are watching, who are unsaved. Hey, listen, all you got to do is ask him to come into your house. Come into your heart. Believe that he died for you and he rose. And you're part of all of this. You're part of all of this. And then begin to learn of him as you walk with him. And your tomorrow will be better than your today. So bless us now, Father, as we go forward. In Jesus' name, amen.